Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and I am really excited to bring you my interview with Michael Wyatt from Flores Tortillas. You might know Michael from his previous restaurant, Flores Barbecue, which started in Whitney and then moved to Fort Worth. It was also a top 50 barbecue joint from Texas Monthly Magazine. But Michael left, and a lot of people were wondering what happened. And we get into that. We talk about why he left, what the decision was, that it was a mutual decision. But I'll let Michael say it in his words so you could hear it all. And then you could hear the different jobs that he took after that. Things that weren't fulfilling, things that he thought would be fulfilling. And then he started doing these tortillas on the side. And they're an homage to his grandmother on the florist side. And like at his barbecue spot, they use beef tallow, rendered beef fat in the tortillas. Insane. So understandably, you can understand why he's constantly selling out. He talks about how they're available. They now have nationwide ship. He wanted me to let you guys know that the shipping, they're still getting their hands around the shipping aspect and they're still trying to figure out the best way to make it work properly so if you can bear with them there might be some glitches along the way but they'll get that refined so we go in depth about the tortillas we talk about the potential of corn tortillas he talks about potential other little pop-ups or restaurants or one day a week or two day a week things could involve tacos, could involve barbecue. So right now, if you want to get his tortillas, you can get them online. They sell out very quickly. He'll post on Instagram. I'll, I'll put a link to his Instagram below. He'll post when those are going to be available. Like today is Monday, August 24th. They went on sale. I went online exactly at 8 o'clock Pacific time, which was 10 o'clock Central time, and I did pick up some. So you can get them as soon as possible, but I know they are sold out by now. And then he sells in San Marcos and Whitney alternating weekends. Again, you could DM him for stuff. He also talks about his wholesale business and how he wants to expand that. He has his tortillas cade over at Guest Family Barbecue in Waco. They're using them for Taco Tuesdays. Hallberg has his tortillas too. They also have them in a retail case, so you can get those in Waco. Eventually, he'd like to pop up in all the major cities. This is really, really in-depth. I... He and I both thought that this is probably going to be about a 10-minute interview. It turned out to be a 40-minute interview. There's a lot of stuff in here. I can't thank Michael enough for taking the time and being so straightforward about his feelings and about how everything happened and what the future holds and how he's going about this to make sure that it does work out for his family and for the barbecue community and everyone else. And the Kevin's Barbecue Joints podcast and YouTube show is sponsored by Treaty Oak Distilling. They're available at treatyoakdistilling.com. On the website, you can get all their bourbon, rum, rye, gins, all their new ready-to-go things like they have old fashions, they're going to have gin and tonics, they're going to have some really cool stuff, so keep checking back on their website. You could also go to their physical location in Dripping Springs. Their hours, check their social media because their hours do change. They're open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but they're expanding those hours. Alice's Restaurant is there. It's a barbecue and live fire restaurant. They also have beer there. They have wine there. They want to accommodate anyone's drinking needs. As I said before, great people, great product, great products, tons of great products. Check them out, treatyoakdistilling.com. And if you're digging these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. Apparently you should subscribe and then click some little bell so you get notifications. Because I put two to three of these out per week. I don't want you to miss out. If you're listening to this just on the podcast at youtube.com slash kevinsbbqjoints for all my YouTube stuff. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com with tons of original content breaking news, links to all the podcasts, YouTube stuff, as well as eventually information on my new website that's launching in September, which I think will be an awesome tool for you guys, a celebration of barbecue. I think it'll be really, really killer. I'm on all social media at Kevin's BBQ Joints. But again, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Support your local restaurant and support your local barbecue joint. I mean, to be honest, really, I mean, it was just a kind of a mutual separation uh, just from, you know, it, it was just one of those things that it, we we got into the situation and, and it wasn't really working. I wasn't happy for multiple reasons, but I mean, a lot of it had to do with just being away from my family and mm-hmm. and just not it not being exactly what I wanted it to be. It, it was more of a mutual thing. It's like you know they were understanding of that, and you know I you know I, I was honest with them about how I felt about it, and that I just wanted to you know part ways, and we parted ways, you know, in a professional and and um, you know, good way rather yeah. than an ugly way. And they were very, you know, uh, uh, professional and, and like, you know, we, I still keep in touch with a couple of the people out of that situation and no hard feelings to anybody. And hopefully that no hard feelings towards me, which I don't think there are. It was just something, you know, you get into the situation sometimes and 
and they don't work out necessarily. And yeah, you just kind of have to walk away from it and, and regroup and, and learn from your mistakes. Now, was it easy after uh, that for me to accept? It was a hard time, you know, for and a while. How was that decision? Was that, a, that making that final decision? I'm sure you talked to your wife. I'm sure you dealt with stuff. And then you finally pulled the trigger. Was that... That must have, that just, it was probably the night before that decision. How was that? It, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like an all at once decision okay. either. It was kind of a, a over time decision. It was like you know, well, let's keep trying and see you know, see if things. So they understood we, that things were starting yeah, to kind of okay. Yeah, and so so it was it was one of those things. Is like we were trying to make it work, and and you know, it, it just it, it was just a, it got to a point where I was just like you know. I'm not happy doing this anymore. And really, I think it, it wasn't even necessarily that situation uh, that was Charlie uh, broke the camel's back. It was more so I think I was burnt out on barbecue. Like, like truthfully, I mean, truth be told. And, and I'm sure there are people, I'm sure there's others that are too. I'm sure there's yeah. people watching this that probably are. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, like even when, before we even moved to Fort Worth, I think I had burnt myself out just working so hard, mm-hmm. you know, you know, doing, I mean, I was, from the majority of the time, I was the only guy cooking, you know, the barbecue. I had, you know, one guy in particular that came in for a little while and he took a lot of weight off my shoulders, but then he ended up having to quit for personal reasons. And so, so, you know, like just, yeah, so. just all of that, you know, like it was, it was, you know, going so hard for so long. I mean, we went for, you know, two and a half, three years, just, you know, pushing, pushing, pushing and, and, you know, and, and it was, don't get me wrong. Like I, I enjoyed it. But at the same time, physically, emotionally, mentally, it takes a toll on you. So I feel like even before I moved to Fort Worth, like I was already burnt out. And so moving to Fort Worth, I, you know, in a way, I guess I thought like, you know, it'll be it'll be helpful in a way, you know, because we'll we'll be able to get people that can help and, you know, this and that. But it it just didn't work out that way. And, and, you know, so so like I don't necessarily blame any of the the Flores barbecue coming to a temporary end on that situation. I kind of just it's kind of just a compilation of like everything that led up to that. And even before, like I said, before we moved to Fort Worth, I was already feeling burnt, you know, and I think a lot of people in the business feel that way. And maybe not admit it even to themselves, because I know I didn't I didn't admit it to myself for a long time. And, you know, at a point you just like you have to you just have to be honest with yourself and and eventually just say, hey, you know, okay, I need to I need to regroup. And Mm -hmm. so like so after we stopped this Fort Worth thing, you know, I I went a whole different direction. I I ended up, you know, going to work for some other people. And I was, you know, in the food business, right? Weren't you? Yeah, in in the food business. Yeah, I was uh, working for basically a cafeteria style uh, uh, food company that, you know, we were a third party company at a at a manufacturing facility. And so but it was like a little bit higher end, you know, they they wanted to be a little bit higher end. And so that's why they brought me on. Was it was it sales? No, 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 no. So I, I went to go work for Cisco for a little bit. I, I definitely did not oh, like yeah. that. Because no, I have, yeah, I have a, just, yeah, a friend that did that for a little bit too. And it yeah. Drove me crazy. That definitely just was not my bag. Nothing it against Cisco. Certain, you know, no, it takes a certain they, type of individual. It's a it's high stakes, high pressure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I'm just not, I just wasn't cut out for that. And so I was just like, yeah, no, I'm good. But after that, that's when I went to go work for that other company that was, you know, I was able to create, I was able to cook other things other than barbecue. You know, I didn't cook brisket probably for a good, you know, three, four months at least. After doing it so much. Yeah. After doing it day in, day out. And actually, you know, I was, it was actually kind of, it made me anxious. It was weird uh, to actually like cook barbecue again. Like it it was, it made me anxious for a long time. And I was just like, yeah, just, you know, I'll do it later. So I was enjoying really like cooking everything else. I mean, people like started noticing on my like Instagram page, I started, you know, toying with like fermentation and, you know, (laughs) other, you know, um, things that, things that, you know, really, you know, let me, it really let me express myself through my food. Your creativity. Other than yeah. Just, yeah, other than just barbecue, because you get in this monotonous, like, cycle of you're making only barbecue, you know, these, you know, like, four or five meats at least every every single week, every, you know, for four or five days out of the week. And, you know, it's, it's great and all, but it, it, it takes a toll on you. I, I think, I think some people are okay with that because they don't, they don't have any like, aspir- and I don't, I don't mean to talk bad about people, but some people are just okay with that, you know, but. Well, no, so, so certain people like a certain routine. Like I think that for me too, mm-hmm. for a lot of jobs, like I'll work a certain job for three, four years. And then all of a sudden I just, I just, it doesn't, it's the enthusiasm for that profession or whatever I'm doing. I'm sure that happens like for the, like a great pizza maker or a great, I'm sure after a yeah. while you're like, do I want to make a pizza? Like people love it. Yeah. They line up, they light out the door, but uh, yeah. So I could see yeah. that. That makes sense. And it's, I don't think there's anything 
like there's people though that like that routine i think yeah yeah exactly and and but but for me it's just not that's just not mm-hmm. i i went to culinary school and i enjoy food in general not just barbecue and so so like you know my creativity just took like a a stand you know a yeah. halt for like however many years you know a few years and just you know, I wasn't able to, I mean, I would, I was able to, but I didn't have the energy. Mm-hmm. Like after cooking the barbecue, I just didn't have the energy to be, you know, more creative and try to, you know, innovate. And people probably look though, that, like that you made the top 50 and that you got, people probably look at that and go, they can't believe because not many people have shifted courses after something like that. It's a, it's, you yeah. might be the first. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and see, and you know, and, and that's, and that's okay. You know, that that's because I'm in that, like you were saying earlier, I'm just kind of in that mindset of like, I, if, if something's not intriguing to me, if something's not fun to me anymore or, or a challenge anymore necessarily, you know, I, I want to do something else. And I've done that with jobs, especially like when something, when I get to the point where like I'm only teaching and not learning, because you can teach and learn at the same time. For sure. But like, if you're just teaching and not learning, you get to a point where it's just like, okay, I got to. I got to further myself because like I've always wanted to, and I still do. I always want to educate myself. I feel like education is never, especially in the food industry is never over. There's always going to be somebody that's better than you, somebody that knows more than you. Yeah. And so, and that's a great, and that's a great thing because you can always learn. And like the, the thing before I started doing the tortillas was I wanted to, uh, well, I've been doing tortillas, but you know, when I really decided that that was going to be our new business, I was like, I'm going to start baking. That's going to be my, cause like that, that's always been a daunting, like thing over my head. You know, it's like, uh, baking is, is was something that most like chefs, like they have a baker, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's like, you're either, There's you're like two path, yeah. or you're a chef. Yeah. And so, uh, and baking class is usually like the chef's like least favorite class because, you know, in culinary school, because, you know, you, it's very precise measurements and, you know, it's a, it's very, you know, cut and dry. Like, so that was kind of my idea of like wanting to you know go on and just do like okay i'm gonna learn this trade because like it's something that i'm not good at you know i want to learn something that i'm not good at uh because you know that's how you that's how you grow as a person that's how you grow as a a, a professional yeah yeah exactly stagnant is a a perfect word for it you don't want to be in that situation how did that go well you know i did a couple of sourdough recipes and stuff like that especially you know during all this this time you know people were baking more and stuff so it was it was definitely hard to get you know commercial yeast and stuff so i said you know and i I tried dabbled in, in doing some sourdough before and stuff like that. And so did that for a little bit. And then, but then we started making tortillas so I could make a little extra money on the side. You know, that was the idea of it. It's like, I was like, Hey, I'm going to throw my wife. Anything about me doing like 20 dozen a weekend, you know, it didn't take me much to do 20 dozen. You know, I have the machine, you know, the, the press for it and stuff like that. So, you know, 200 extra bucks a weekend, you know, over, over a month, you know, that's like for a farmer's market. We think, cause you do a couple of farmer's markets, right? Is that what you're Yeah. Thinking? Yeah. Well, we do the farmer's market in Whitney. Okay. And so I was just, at that point i was just talking about doing just out of the house oh i was awesome. like hey you know people yeah just somebody just come pick them up you know it's 20 dozen it's not that you know i, I can sell 20 dozen fairly easily and uh so you know i was like you know an extra 800 bucks a month you know that's a, that's my truck payment plus that's you know big. a couple other bills right yeah. so but then you know we i put those first like 20 i think 20 or 25 dozen for sale that, that first weekend and then they were like gone and like 10 minutes i mean literally like this i mean i posted them the day that we were the that i made them and they were gone oh that's killer and so that says something and so i was like okay well you know let's make a couple more in the next time and then you know kind of kept growing and then i then i started you know a lot of people from my hometown in san marcus they were asking you know hey you're gonna be in town you know and then friends from austin you know barbecue friends and and different stuff and so it just kind of gradually you know I mean, actually pretty quickly grew to like, you know, I was up to like a hundred and 120 dozen a week. And I'm like, okay, like <laughs> this is getting, a, good this is getting a little, little getting a little out of hand, which is, you know, which is, it's a great thing. Like it's a great, you know, it's a great thing to have that kind of support. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, I was making more on the weekend than I was, you know, at five days at work. And I was like, well, that doesn't make much sense for me to, sense. doesn't make much sense for me to be working, you know, five days a week doing that when I could be putting those five days towards a business that, you know, could potentially make me quite a bit more money. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, it's not about the money necessarily, but, but, you know, any business of course is, is, you no, know, but making money, money and also fill that void that, that 
that con- competitiveness and that also that drive for creativity to do something and create yeah. tur- turn something into nothing. I mean, for <laughs> not, not turn something the opposite, turn something from yeah. nothing into something. <laughs> into something, yeah. And, and and also, you know, a lot of it has to do with like, what is this going to get me in the future? You know, because like my my goal in life is not to open a tortilla factory and that's it. You know, like that's the rest of my life. That's not that's definitely not where this is leading and nor do I want it to. I mean, eventually, yes, I want to have a tortilla factory that can that can you know, run itself, I can have the right people in place that that, you know, the quality stays, you know, stays high as possible. And we're producing a great product and still doing, you know, making making it special. But at the same time, it can lead to me being able to finance my own concepts down the road. You're using those tortillas at that concept, whether that's the case or or I want to do any other concept I want to do again. I, you know, I don't I don't ever like want to put myself in a gotcha. in a box again. Like you know, like them, yeah. Yeah, I want to be able to still like I want to be able to like say if I want to do any kind of concept, whether it's Tex-Mex or tacos or barbecue or if I want to do southern co- country food, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm always going to do it at a high level. This will give me the opportunity to do whatever I want to do. Yeah. Um, and that's what I, that's the way I see it is, is it's it's a it's a move to where we're giving a great product to people that whether it's whether it's an individual, whether it's a restaurant whatever it may be to increase, you know, the, the quality of their food. Mm -hmm. And it's providing me and my family a living that is a comfortable living without having to kill myself, you know, with doing barbecue, which is barbecue is a a hard business. If you're cooking on offset smokers and, and, you know, you're putting in the hours and you're paying the high, you know, the high cost of all the meats. And I think, I think a lot of people just don't, just don't see, Mm -hmm the inner workings and don't see the the true ugly part of it. And don't get me wrong. I don't mean to be a person that it's a, I, I'm, I'm not a half by SMD kind of guy, but at the same time, there has to be some kind of truth come out mm-hmm. that it is a hard business. And it is, I mean, it's probably, and I've had different chefs tell me out of, you know, they're like, man, we, you know, have been in the business is hard, but barbecue is a whole nother level mm-hmm. you know it's it's a whole other level than than just you know being in the industry that is already hard yeah the food industry itself it's not easy yeah it's i mean it's a cutthroat you know uh uh down and dirty business that you know people only see these celebrity chefs that have, have made it <laughs> you know look easy and and have staffs of you know hundreds of people and but if you look but if you look at a lot of those people they've gone through a couple yeah. wi- wives or husbands and it's it takes a toll on their family life it takes a toll physically some of them you could see look drained yeah yeah definitely and and it takes a lot out of you and it, and that's the thing is like i was like i don't want to be i don't want to be that that father i don't want to be that husband i don't want to you know i want to be you know i want to i want it to be a balance and i think that's a big thing in the industry right now too as in, in as a whole is like trying to find a life work balance mm-hmm. you know and so and having this cash flow would be nice to have that cash flow for to you know for the other project yeah exactly and so that's where the tortilla business came you know and like i said it was more of like let's make a little extra money on the side and it's become something where i can really produce enough and, and hopefully you know we're, we're we're moving into a kitchen this coming week okay uh, it's actually our old kitchen from the tor- to, from the barbecue oh, restaurant it is. Oh, wow. uh, yeah yeah because the, the the restaurant portion or the you know the eating area that ended up being turned into a game room funny enough like a uh almost like a gambling game room kind oh, really? of thing it's, 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 <laughs> it's yeah yeah it's, it's, and, but the kitchen it, you know it, it they never used it and they didn't plan on using it so i i called my old landlord and said hey you know what do you think about this and you know, we worked out a deal, and, and so we're going to be moving in there. We, we got a new tortilla machine. Is that what is that what that picture that on the recent yeah. Instagram? Yeah, yeah, that was a it, it's a it's a press, uh, it's a combo press, and it cooks them and it does everything. You know, all you have to do is really get the dough balls, dough and dough balls ready. Wow. You just drop them in there, and it does the rest for you. So that at full capacity, if we have the dough balls ready to go, we'll do nine hundred an hour. Wow. So that will 900 tortillas now. So, um, so that will increase our production dramatically, but you know, we're not, we're trying to grow at a steady rate to where, you know, we don't, you know, we don't get overwhelmed and, and try to, you know, go all out. And I've already hired a couple of the girls that worked for me, uh, previously. So, you know, it, wow. it's good to have people that I can trust. And hmm. eventually I, I, you know, I, like I said, I want to have people in place that they can run the business and I, you know, you know, I'm able to, you know, concentrate on other things that I want to do. 
So will you be doing, you'll be doing wholesale as well as like to yes. rest, you want to do to restaurants. And then I noticed that you've been talking, I think you talked to Jose as well about um, doing shipping nationwide. You want to do that. That's, a, that's another goal, right? Yeah. So nationwide shipping should be actually uh, possible within the next couple of weeks. Okay. That's, that's our goal to get that really right now, all this holding us back. We were having trouble finding, you know, shipping rates that were reasonable, but now we have that, but now it's just a matter of being able to produce enough. Mm-hmm. And so we'll be shipping. We are going to have wholesale prices for restaurants as well. Smart. And then we'll have probably, we're probably going to put in like a pickup window kind of thing so people can pick up locally as well. Uh, and and I'm hoping that we can do kind of similar to what HEB does. Or I mean, what HEB here in, in the state, in Texas, I forget it's not everywhere. We wish it was. We I wish it was, <laughs> I wish it was here. Uh, uh, HEB has where you can get fresh tortillas, you know, like warm. You know, so so those are all all in the work. What makes your tortilla special? We do uh, smoke the the beef fat that goes into them, which that that originally started in the barbecue uh, restaurant where you know we had excess fat from the briskets that we trimmed, and so you know that that's how that started. And actually, the way that I I, I thought about it was, um, and I and I know it's been done before. I'm not saying that I'm the first. I mean, I, I don't know about the smokes part of it that that might be something that we're pretty close to being one of the few or at least the few that do it easily uh but but the beef fat tortillas have been around for a long time i'm not i'm not saying that we you know we were the first ones to do it by any means but but uh when when i was talking to uh the owner of adams and barbecue you know we just had conversations throughout you know uh you know through social media and stuff and he was saying that they use their beef fat in their bread recipe oh, yeah that's and right so, they do i forgot about that yeah. yeah and so uh i was like well why can't we do that in tortillas because at the time we were using pork fat and then just we had the space on the pit so we were like yeah we'll just throw it in some hotel pans and that way we don't have to have a you know a, a pot going in the kitchen and so yeah that's how they and they did it giving it kind of a subtle smoky flavor and so that's Weren't people getting? were people getting asking for a lot? Were, were you selling them to it at the beginning? You weren't, and then you started selling them, right? Is that how really, we would only sell them if we had extras. I mean, because we were making such such a small amount. I mean, because we on top of everything else, you know, and tacos ended up it, originally tacos were a special. They were only on, I, I believe, Thursday or Friday. That ended up turning into every every day we would do tacos because they were so popular. And then we would have the ones that we would just put on the trays and you know, in place of white bread. Uh, so yeah, we, it was just kind of a thing where we, we only made a certain number and that, that, that was it. That's all we could do. Cause uh, on top of everything else. And people love the heck out of them. Yeah. Really and people really loved them. And, and that was one of the things that made us special. And so, you know, and that's, and that was something when I, when I started thinking about doing anything really, I was like, what can, what can I make? Like I said, on the side that, you know, that I can make a little extra cash, you know, on top of my job, my day job or whatever. And, and that was like, oh, tortillas, you know, that's a pretty simple thing I can do. I mean, it's a little bit of labor, you know, doing the dough and all that stuff. But it's really not that big of a deal. It's, 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 it's you know, it's still a, a product that can be refrigerated. It can be frozen. You know, it's, it's something that it's not like, you know, I have to sell it right then and there. You know, it can hold for a minute, even though we, we have a hard time keeping them in stock. But <laughs> I've, I've never frozen tortillas. How does that does it work pretty good? I mean, it's just like bread. I mean, bread, yeah. bread is, is, is really, bread, yeah. it's, it's really forgiving to to being frozen. And so, um, yeah, it's it's it, it freezes really well. And we actually put sheets in between each uh, tortilla. That way they don't stick hmm. uh, at all, because uh, sometimes you get moisture that's just built up. And, and even if you cool them down, they're just going to once like a real, you know, fresh flour tortilla that's not mission brand or, you know, one of the. They will stick together. They will mold. You know, it's funny. When I talked to Jose, too, I think he brought up mission. He's like, do not buy those. Do not buy them. He did, He's like, like, you know, if you have to, get a tortilla. <laughs> like, But overall, try to get something local. Try to get something that's handmade, that's yeah. that's fresh. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's the thing. Is I, you know, I, like at the beginning, I had people tell me, oh, well, they molded within, within a day. And I was like, yeah, they're, they don't have any preservatives. They, you know, they're not, they're not like your store-bought tortillas that are going to, and it didn't even cross my mind to tell people that, you know, so now we tell people to refrigerate them, you know, as soon as they get them home. That's good to know. Okay. I'll, I'll make sure to mention that in the intro too. Definitely refrigerate them. Uh, they can, we vacuum seal them now. We have a commercial vacuum sealer, so we vacuum seal them. So they're good for about two weeks in the fridge. Uh, I mean, after the, the seal is broken, it might be a little less, but it just kind of depends. Uh, but definitely in the freezer up to a month. Uh, they'll, they'll be good. 
so that's why some people will buy, you know, three or four dozen and they'll throw, you know, they'll have one in the fridge and, you know, a few in the freezer. So they'll pull them out whenever they want them. So, yeah, it works out really well. And then with the vacuum sealing, they have a, a little bit of extra time in the in the shipping process. So that, yeah, that's, what we were, that. that's what we were having trouble with with our previous packaging is that they were molding by the time they got to Makes sense. the customer. And so they're taking out some of that air or most of the air uh, out of that packaging and also letting them cool. Try to let them cool all the way to room temperature before we pack them uh, has definitely helped that. There's different mold inhibitors that, that have been uh, presented to us, but we don't know that we want to do that yet or if we want to do that at all. Just We just have, we have to do some R&D that we haven't done yet uh, to make sure that it doesn't change quality, it doesn't change flavor. And then obviously if there's any allergen to the, you know, we got to do all that. So that might be something that way that the shelf life is a little bit longer. But we're never going to turn into that one that that uh, dozen of tortillas you can put on the counter for a month and it'd just be fine. Yeah, you know, but it's funny. Is... Yeah, like if like the ones that like like that like Mission, like I've had yeah I've had out for a long time and I'm like they're bad. I'm like oh they're not bad. Well that's weird. That's <laughs> that's scary. They should be. Bad. Yeah, it is. Yeah, your food shouldn't last that long on the counter. No, and then so now with with shipping, like I, th- I think I've seen them on I think on the West Coast. I saw, so you've been testing a little bit of seeing how they yeah you travel. know and, and that's that's to you know personal friends of mine and stuff because like because I know that they'll be understanding if something is wrong you know rather yeah. than sending them to a customer that I don't know and they're like and then well, they it's just a good blow way to test it out so, yeah yeah because yeah, like I know if I like, get my friends they'll they'll like post it if it's good they're not going to post it if it's bad mm-hmm. so but you know and that's the thing is like i want to make sure that this is right before we do it you know i don't and i don't want to do it if it's not right and i don't want to rush it if it's not right and i and i hope people understand that um and i did make a video kind of explaining the situation and, and telling people you know because like once uh jose wrote that article it, it was it was a blessing and, it, and we, yeah. we we love it but uh at the same time like we had people just like hey i need to order them hey i need to order them and that's great and we and like i said we really appreciate it but at the same time like i don't want to put out a product that i don't stand behind you know and people and so should appreciate that they should so that's why we're, we're just trying to take our time we're not we're trying to get it out as quick as possible but we're also trying to do it as as well as possible and so yeah that, that's kind of where we're at at the moment what's the website going to be it's flores tortillas.com okay, okay. and it's already up people can go to it but we you just can't order it's it's yeah. it's like it stops you from ordering right now uh but we'll have all of our merchandise uh i'll be i'll be ordering more of these caps yeah i was gonna say those caps which were, killer, which yeah. were super popular right? which surprised me uh is that from brady did he create it yeah yeah brady does all my uh flores tortilla designs and stuff like he's he's a magician and, and yeah, i have him working yeah. so and brady clark for too. people they yeah 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 dude's insane uh insanely talented yeah so he he did he he did this one and he we have like this is actually a combination of two of the i think eight designs that he did for me wow but he so i have i've only i've only really used two of the of the eight that he's sent. Okay. So I have more in, 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 in store for people once we start doing more merchandise and stuff like that. So, and then also the shirt, I think I have a maroon shirt. Oh uh, yeah, it was. And that one, that one is, it was kind of a weird situation with brisket country. You know, I, I don't want to get into that. That's a more of a Brady question, but, but yeah, so they had to stop. Really what happened is, is it, it just kind of went, came to a halt for the reasons that he will let you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, as far as the, these caps, I am in touch with the, person that he was working with uh on the embroidery and stuff like that uh and i should be getting those really the hold up right now is is the blanks they he can't get the blanks at the moment okay so he's waiting on that they're on back order once those come in he'll uh do the patches and get them put on for us and then i'll have more of those in stock and we're also gonna do we're gonna do this one and we're gonna do a red white and blue oh cool uh kind of version of it and then uh we'll have more shirts and all that but that's all going to come within with time yeah. uh and we'll have it all on online and that will all be available at, at floristortillas.com so i might have a special shirt that no one else has actually. yeah yeah well, <laughs> <laughs> it well, fits. I mean, yeah it, well some people have it like, it's probably about i don't know 40 or 50 people that have that same yeah. shirt but okay. that's a limited but, edition, but you are going to yeah, a limited edition but you will be having other like, shirts and other additional yeah, yeah we'll have we'll have all kind of stuff there yeah. eventually and i got we just i don't know if you saw our, our post uh yesterday oh, the that the tortilla face mask uh you know i had been thinking about it a couple of days and, and uh some people posted uh a or tagged me in a post it was kind of similar but it was more joking yeah 
Uh, and so I was like, well, you know, maybe we should do it. And I've had it's a clever, I like crazy, it. crazy response to it way more than I thought, which is great. You know, I, I you know, I, it was originally just for going to be for us, just for the staff, because we're going to have to wear masks anyway. So oh, yeah. I figured it let make it fun, you know, and then people just, you know, they love them. So now, now I'm going to have to order more and do all that. So, and I feel bad too, because the two hats that you sent me for the contest, uh-huh. are in someone else's hand. Someone else has them. I wish I'd kept them because those Flores <laughs> barbecue has, they were killer too. They were cool. They're very unique. Yeah. You have a, I can see you have your creative juices that flow even for the merchandise. Yeah. And it, and it's, and it's, uh, it's in my head. It just doesn't come out of my hands. So I got to usually, I usually have to get somebody else to do that part of it. So I have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of ideas, but, but I can't execute them like people like Brady can do. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a true talent for sure. No, but it's nice that you have the that, that you have the ability to, to offer that too. I think that's a, that'll be yeah. a cool ancillary thing. So the business itself, it has exponential growth. You know, it's like it's it, 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 sky's the limit, really. Mm-hmm. But personally, I feel like there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to just be like, okay, that's it. You know, uh, who, who we're we're at a point where I don't want to grow anymore because quality. I guess at the point where quality starts to suffer, mm-hmm. that's where we'll cut. So it. you'll stay at a certain level. That's the plan. Yeah, I don't want to. Like, I don't want to turn into a nationwide thing that you can get at Walmart or even at convenience stores. Like, I that's well, not that sense, is not yeah. my goal because I want it to be special. I want somebody. I want somebody to be like, man, we got to go to a certain place to get the tortillas because it, because they're special. Mm-hmm. You know, because we do put a lot of effort. We put a lot of time and 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 you know, I wouldn't say blood, sweat, and tears like barbecue, but but we have put a lot of effort into this as well. It's kind of a homage, an homage to my like you know my my Florida side and my grandmother and stuff like that because you know she she's. she's she tried to teach me at least and and i kind of tried to to recreate what she did before even though it, it might not be her exact recipe but it's it's what i remember eating as a as a kid so do you think you'll stay do you think you'll stick with this one specific tortilla or do you think you'll be creative? no no so what we want to do is so right now we we use post oak uh wood to smoke our fat mm-hmm. uh i am going to do a little bit of testing out some different woods, uh, oh. specifically mesquite and pecan. So they're all like Texas woods to see if it changes the flavor profile. If it doesn't change the flavor, flavor profile, we'll probably just <laughs> yeah. won't even mess with it. But if it does, um, those three different uh, varieties will be available. And also, this is the big one, is, is uh, and a lot of people are asking, is corn, corn tortillas. But that one is a – that I don't have any experience in, and I will not lie. I have no experience doing corn, but I know that if we do it and when we do it, it will be the correct way. We, you know, we'll do the the whole process. You know, we'll get the corn, you know, and, and soak it. And uh, I can't think of the the process what it's called, but you'll you know, know. you'll uh, figure it out. Like you'll... <laughs> yeah, I'll figure it out. Yeah, and then we'll grind it and do it, do everything like that. So well, we're going to cool. do it the right way, the hard way, of course. Um, but that's that's the that's the eventual goal. Uh, but you know, we, we have time, we have yeah. time to figure all that out. Yeah. We got to catch up with the flower tortillas first. So right now you're focused on this and then, cause I'm sure you get questions all the time and I'm sure you expected mm-hmm. me to ask you about a restaurant or something down the road. That's more 2021, 2022. Like right now you're focused on your, the flowers tortillas. That's the, yeah. I mean, the, the one thing that comes to mind that I may be able to do sooner rather than later would be a taco spot, uh, at least maybe like a day or two a week taco spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not promising anything. Don't don't take this as gospel, but uh, it'll uh, be the, that'll be the headline. It'll just be yeah. <laughs> Michael's yeah, opening up a taco place in uh, yeah in the, August. The, 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 the click <laughs> clickbait. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, no, that's that's definitely. I'm not making any promises because I like I said I want to make sure that. Yeah, it's in the back of my mind. It's not. It's not far fetched. And and barbecue is something that people ask me every day. I can't go into the local stores here then, and not be you know asked when do you open the barbecue place? When do you open a barbecue place? You know, you're back in town. We know you're back in town. When are you gonna open up? You know, and so, uh, you know, and it's great. And I I really appreciate that people. But so eventually, like if we do barbecue again, and and I and I and that's a okay. I say if. We're going to do a barbecue place again eventually, but I don't want people to think it's going to happen next week. It will be a Saturday only place. I don't. I don't want a, even a three or four, two day. I want it to be one day, you that know. And so, that's that will be because it will be a pet project at that point, and it will be enjoyable at that point. But again, when that's going to happen, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> and you seem 
it, you seem good. Like I, I, it's, I know right now, you know, it's COVID time. Everybody's like in a weird headspace, but it yeah. seems like you have something that, that could distract you from how weird the world is right now. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, I think that this whole situation that everybody's in together, it's, it's really how you react to the situation. Now the restaurant industry and my, and my friends that are in the restaurant industry, I feel for them so much because they, they have been impacted in a way that I can't even imagine being in business. I, I, I mean, in a way it's a blessing that I'm not, Yeah. you know, because, because, uh, you know, I hate to say that, but, but really like I couldn't imagine, you know, being in business and having employees that you have to, you know, either let go or for low or, or just, you know, have to pay them and not pay yourself yeah. or, you know, whatever, whatever it may and be. And worry uh, about their, their safety and then the customer safety. And yeah. yeah. And, and just, just have, and then, yeah, if you're going to re, if you decide to reopen and, and have to go through all the protocol and stuff like that, like it, it is, I mean, Massive. it's something that is, un, it's, un, it's, un, it's unimaginable. And so, you know, but at the same time, it has given me the opportunity for people that, you know, their people are staying home and they're, you know, they're cooking more at home. And, and so, yeah. you know, it, it's actually a good thing for our product. It, our product is a good thing at this time. And it's, it's given us the opportunity to grow as a business. And, you know, and, and so, so in a way it, it is a good thing for me and the business, it gives us the opportunity to a unique opportunity to get in that market while, while I can. How do they get tortillas from you? So right now they're available on alternating weekends. Uh, one weekend will be in San Marcos. Okay. Uh, and, and really that's pre-order only because, uh, we, we don't have a spot at the farmer's market or anything. Uh, it's just, I, I truthfully tell them at my mom's house, uh, yeah. just off the porch, you know, people come and pick them up. Uh, but it's, it's, uh, but they're all pre-ordered pre -order via DM not, or something or how do they, like, they yeah, they them? DM me or, uh, DM me on Instagram or Facebook. Okay. And that way, that way I'm not technically selling them there. It's just like, they're just picking them up. Yeah, yeah. And so, and then the other one is the farmer's market in Whitney. Uh, so really it's just it, every oh, alternate weekend. Again. So like this coming weekend, I'll be in San Marcos okay. next weekend. Then the next weekend I'll be in, uh, back, back in Whitney at the farmer's market. But these, this weekend's already sold. Yeah, claim. it's already done. Yeah. I have, uh, I have them all sold. They're already, yeah, everything's already done. I, I haven't had to post the last couple of times I went to San Marcos. It's like people, people already order them before I even have to make a post, which oh, is great. That's cool. But that's really again, neat. I want to be able to produce enough that, that everybody that wants them gets them or at least has the opportunity to get them. So then, and then down the, down the road, you will probably have it more where you could pick up, like buy at the, farmer's market right well like is that i guess i guess i'm well, trying to think of like how or would it just be all be pre-ordered i guess it could be so pre people, still buy, still, people still buy at the farmer's market and i, I really don't take many pre-orders at the farmer's market it's more a first come first serve in that in that situation oh, gotcha. because okay. i am actually selling there oh okay but eventually i mean well with hopefully with the next couple of weeks we'll be selling them from the kitchen so people can get them monday through friday there or they can go on saturday to the to the farmer's market okay i'll get that address from you again i think i had it from before yeah it's a uh, 2222 state highway 22 a lot of 22 uh, yeah. 22, 22, yeah, 22. A lot of twos, yeah. <laughs> which is makes it easier to remember. Super easy. so if people want to drive down and get them in the, like i said it, it will announce through my social media when all of this is available For and sure. we'll have on the website you know all that stuff we'll, we'll get it all uh, squared away on that and that aspect after that then you know shipping will be available so you don't necessarily have to come to whitney to get them uh i mean you can't always make the drive up to whitney it's a nice it's a pretty drive from anywhere you come really yeah, exactly and this day and age it's kind of nice to get the heck out for a little bit yeah definitely <laughs> and so uh yeah and so once we're shipping nationwide and we've really had it's kind of a weird uh situation where we've had so many people asking for tortillas like california and florida those have both been big uh, spots of people asking but ohio we have a lot of people in Ohio. For sure. I don't know what it wow. is about Ohio, but I, I, I love that That's they have awesome, interest man. in us. And so, so a shout out to Ohio on this. Yeah, shout out to Ohio for some uh, reason that uh, is not known to me. But no, there's but there's a lot of people too that once once I do know that you can ship. I have a lot of friends that will want because they they always ask me about that, and that's something that even I'm in California. You think it would be easy, 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 but to get really good tortillas, it's not easy. And a lot of places too, yeah. they sell out really quick because yeah, yeah. And and uh, you know, I've been in talks with Danny over at Heritage about you know maybe going out there doing some kind of collaboration. You know, once they Please get up do. and running and stuff. You know, once things maybe. Maybe once things cool down just a little bit more, we'll do something out there hopefully. And, and I just gotta figure I gotta figure out how to take my uh, tortilla press on the plane. 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> be the cargo I really I don't know that I want to drive to California. You know, that's down the line too. So, you know, then and you know, we'll 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 be doing a lot. I want to do a lot of collaborations with people because I, you know, again, I still like doing barbecue. I still like cooking, you yeah. know, with fire. So, you know, this also gives me that outlet of like, Hey, I want to go cook with, I got cooked with my buddy Brett down in uh Rockdale. Not long ago, we did a whole hog, but we kind of, I, I put that. a spin that on it. Cool. I did a little spin on that. Uh, and then we put it in our tortillas. And so, you know, I still got to cook. I still got to, you know, you get to be around the people that 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 world you like. You still love that world. It's just, yeah, yeah, of course. And I love the people, especially. Yeah. I you mean, wouldn't be doing my... this right now with with this crazy guy yeah. from California if you didn't like the world. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but you know, like, and that has been a huge like the support that I've had from my barbecue family. Like, I can't thank any of them enough. I mean, I mean, I know I'm, I, I should name names, but like, you know, like Brett himself, but John Brotherton. Carrie from Snows, Shane Styles has, has reached out to me. Oh, uh, nice. Arnest from Evie Mays, uh, the Ragels, uh, you know. I, I mean, and, and I don't if I don't mention your name in this video, and you reached out to me, don't take offense, but that's that's how many people have reached out to us and showed support and just want to help us as a business and help us to grow and have just given us well wishes and it's and it's crazy because like you know it's like i'm not necessarily doing barbecue anymore but those people that have their lifelong friends and lifelong uh contacts that that help us along the way and and it shows like people talk about the barbecue family all the time i was gonna say that shows yeah i mean it shows like that once you're in like and, and you're part of that group and and the people in that group are so special mm -hmm. and so great that they're, you know, they're there to support you and because we support each other. And that's what, and I think that in this kind of time, especially with how crazy things are, you know, it, it's been nuts. And then, you know, the ones that, that have like already helped us, you know, with, with I like guess in Waco, huh. um, they, they're using our, you know, Cade over there is using our, uh, our tortillas for Taco Tuesday. Oh, really? I didn't know uh, that. That's killer. Yeah, that's cool and, to know. Uh, and Hellberg, yeah, they're using. Well, so we do. We've done one collaboration. We did a barbacoa collaboration, which was way, way more uh, uh, <laughs> successful than we had imagined it would have been. Uh, so the next time we do a collaboration, we're definitely going to ramp up what we what we do. I think we're going to do a couple of goats or something next time uh, oh, we cool. do something together. We'll get his mill scale toy out there. And gosh, you do got something like on that. And there's a lot. And, gosh, there's so much. Like think about it. like the names you dropped already are amazing humans too that's just so cool. oh they're they're amazing people and they're also available for retail at hellberg as well in their in their case oh really okay cool. uh yeah and that's kind of the idea too is eventually we want to have retail spots where people can pick up and, and especially at, in our, at least in the major cities you know dallas houston mm -hmm. uh san antonio uh, and i know I, uh, houston a lot of people in houston have showed it uh some interest and i've actually had people drive from houston to san marcus to get some <laughs> wow um, good for them <laughs> which is a pretty good drive yeah it's just been nuts and and uh, but it's been a blessing and you know this is it, it's one of those things that happened organically it was something that i didn't expect for it to take off like it did but now we're trying to lean into it and you know go with the momentum and you know hopefully down the road uh you know, we will be able to open up concepts without having to take on any investors or anything like that. I'll be able to do it on my own and that's important. Be able to be able to, you know, uh, support my my businesses through maybe this business, at least start them. I think know, so. I think business. so. That's awesome. Yeah. That's uh, it'll, that's that's the goal. And it seems it's, it's just nice to see you too, just to see your face and to see you in still in this world because you're an important part yeah. of that world. And, and, and it's great to be there. And I'm so much happier, really, truthfully. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I don't want people to think that I hated barbecue. I, that's not it at all. It is just it was. I was at the point where I was burnt out, and mm -hmm. I was. It was taking a toll on on me uh, physically, emotionally, and mentally, and and uh, you know, it, and I wasn't seeing my family as much. Even when I lived here in Whitney, even when they were here and they would come to the restaurant, it was like it was never. You had that. You never really had the quality time. Um, that that is so important, especially with my son. He's he's about to turn four. You know and yeah. that. That's crazy how fast that happens. You know, when we, when he, he was born a month and a half after we started the business. Once, and I so, think people probably understand that more now because of COVID, because they're spending more yeah. time with their family. And so people are appreciating that time. Is. So I think you, you know, they can understand why you would want to spend more time with your family. 
So, you know, uh, but yeah, that's what's going on with us. And, uh, you know, hopefully within, uh, within the next couple of months, uh, we'll be full speed, uh, full steam ahead. And then the holidays, we have some special stuff that we want to do. I'm not, again, I'm not making any promises, but the holidays, we have some special stuff that we want to do, uh, whether that happens or not, that kind of depends on how, uh, busy we get with the flour tortillas, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. That's cool. Well, thank you, Michael, for taking the time and thank you for sharing. And we spoke for almost an hour about everything. So I, I, gosh, this is, this is really, really a great talk. And I feel, I feel like I understand where you came from and what you're doing. And then I'll, when I do post a companion blog, I'll put an old interview in it too. So people can kind of see like where your whole journey before and now this journey now but I'm not gonna yeah. connect, I'm not gonna connect it to the the YouTube part, but just when I write it, yeah. so people if people want to see what your mindset was prior to everything, it's a, this is really good. I'm you're in a good space. I'm I'm happy for you. Yeah, well, and I appreciate you you know reaching out to me and wanted to do another another little interview. I know it's supposed to be ten minutes, but it's kind of hard to fit all that in ten Heck minutes. No, no. I, also, I, I, I do want to I do want to shout out to Matt from Meat Church. Uh, I, I didn't mention him in the name before, but I, your cap, thank yeah. God, your, your cap uh, reminded me. But he, he, I mean, he was huge for us, especially for our, our social media, and uh, such a nice guy. And and he, when he posted a couple of pictures, I mean, it's crazy the the popularity that guy has. He has a pretty good following. Time. Yeah, following. he has a huge following. The 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 congregation has grown tremendously, and and uh, he definitely helped us out. Uh, by posting a couple of pictures and stuff like that. So I just definitely want to give him a little that's shout great. out. That's awesome. That's, that, that's a good, that's a great way to wrap this up. Yeah. Matt's a, yeah. a killer guy and he, and he's, and it's amazing. His success is, is another one of those, like he wants success for all of us and it's really cool mm-hmm. to see. And uh, it's nice that he's, you know, helping contribute to your success as well. Cause yeah, you, you yeah. deserve it. You deserve, a, you deserve a good life. For sure. Well, thank you. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Definitely. Thank well, ha- have a good week. And then I'll, if I have any additional questions, I'll ask you, but uh, I'll get this up as soon as I can. I have a couple more to enter to, um, to post, but then after that, I'll okay. get it up. Sounds good. Have appreciate a good you. All right. Have a good weekend. Good to see you. Appreciate you too. You too. All right. Take care. All right, bye. bye.